And just as with our while loops, we can use break and continue with for loops. So break does the same thing as in our while loops. It exits the loop prematurely. It will exit our entire for loop. Continue processing after the for loop is, uh, is done, after it's defined. So wherever it unindents, um, it will continue there. And continue skips to the next iteration, bypassing the remaining code in the current iteration. So uh, here we have an example of a uh, for loop and we have a break statement. And I'm going to go over to PyCharm for this. I've got this same thing copied over here. We've got a break statement and we've got a continue statement. So break would end after our for loop is done. So this is the first line where our for loop is done. It's not indented. Everything in here is indented under the for loop. That is part of the for loop. That is just how Python consumes this and uses indentation. It understands this all to be part of the for loop. Um, so, so break will go immediately, go down here, exit the for loop, continue, will not process anything within the for loop, which is this, because it's still indented in the for loop. But continue will just go back up to the top of the for loop. So we're not going to print print this. So what this does is we, I don't need this threshold variable actually. What this does is we have a numbers list and we're essentially wanting to skip negative numbers. We have a negative number and we'll just say I'm canceling the program due to the negative number. So we're exiting the for loop. Uh, we're also saying if the number mod two, we learned about mod earlier in the course, equals zero. In other words, if it's an even number, then go to the next loop iteration. Just stop processing, this, processing the for loop, go to the top. So continue and tell us that that number is an even number. And then we can say, well, let's say we want to process. We could have more Python code here, for example. Let's say we want to process the positive odd numbers because that is what remains. So we'll say we are processing odd positive numbers only. So you can see our, our break and continue are useful. Break, we would put that here if we if we happen to see an odd num uh, negative number where we just would say, we are done, we don't want to see a negative number, there's some other issue, we need to stop. Whereas if we see an odd number, we're like, okay, that's all right, we'll keep going through our, our list, but we're just not going to process. So let's actually hit play here, hit run, and let's see what we did. This is our list. And what we did is we processed an odd positive number, 5. We said number 10 is even, skipping, processing an odd posit positive number, 15. Number 8 is even, skipping. Number 12 is even, skipping. Canceling program due to negative number, negative 6. So we're like, we never want to see this. And this is all just hypothetical. I'm just, I'm just trying to show you some scenarios here. So we're like, we never want to see this. We're done. So you see it, it finished processing numbers, which we have down here outside of our for loop. We broke the for loop, we broke out of it. Um, where, whereas when we hit the continue, we just went back up to the top and we printed this and went back up to the top. We did not print processing odd positive number. So we excluded 25 and three because they came after our negative number. Um, and that's just a demonstration of using break and continue with our for loops. Again, very similar to our while loops and extremely useful uh, things to know about and be to be able to leverage in our Python programming.